We asked about the 350 Rand grant because there were a lot of people calling in as a result of a report done with Babalo and Denze. He reflected on the fact that a number of uh, non-profit organizations, think tanks, analysts, a whole uh, group gathered from civil society to talk about the need to extend and possibly increase the special grants to prevent a humanitarian crisis. Flowing out of that, a lot of you started calling in, sending in text messages and raising problems saying that you applied for the grant, got a approval sometimes didn't get money sometimes got money for one month but didn't get money later to get a sense of how this might be dealt with we're now joined by Paseka Litsatsi who's a spokesperson for the agency Sasa uh, Ms. Litsatsi welcome and thanks a lot for your time Good afternoon, John, and good afternoon to the listeners as well. Thank, thank you very much for, for joining us at short notice. As I said, we're getting lots of calls around this. Um, is this a common problem that people have been approved, they expect four months, they, they get July, they don't get August, and they get September, but maybe it's short? No, no, look, we, we do experience uh, uh, such, uh, um, John, and I think there's an explanation behind it. Uh, because uh, basically what we do, um, we do monthly verification process. Right. Um, so, so if you have, you can get uh, the 350 in, in, in June because it's lockdown level five, right? right? Then in, in, in October and on lockdown level one, then you have gone back to your employment and you are now getting an income. So we are able to pick it up, uh, and uh, when when we know that you are getting an income, then you don't necessarily qualify for that particular grant. So that's that that has been a uh, most problems which has been happening, and what people have been experiencing most of the time. So how how do you determine? I mean. It- it, it, it presumably can't just be from the fact that the lockdown levels change because even though uh, dry cleaners, uh, it's a bad example, restaurants, let me use a better one, are now allowed to operate. The restaurant where I worked may have closed down because of cash flow problems. How do you, how do you, how do you make an individual determination in the way that you've just described? No, no, you're quite right, John. We don't necessarily, um, uh, it's not a blanket approach. Uh, yes. We assess each, each each case on its own merit. Um, hence, when you make that application, you also give us the, your account. Uh, Hi, still with us, Mr. Uh, oh, there we go. Please continue. Yes. yes, we are able to verify that because we do have your banking details and we know that uh, you were getting an income or you no longer get anything in your account and so on. By law, we are supposed to make sure that we verify uh, whatever happens in your account. We don't just uh, necessarily say, your Okay, I, I, I think we're going to try and get Pasega Litsatsi back because that that's a, we, we had a really important point in the conversation where he's saying that they check bank details. Uh, my follow-up question to him would have would have been, if you see an amount coming in from the restaurant where I used to work, how do you determine whether that is a one-off uh, gratuity payment? It's an attempt to um, cushion the blow to a, a loyal and, and, and effective employee. How do you know that it's a salary you, you, uh, of a job that's now resumed? Because that would be how, how are we looking there. Okay, we've, I think we've got him back. Mr. Latazzi, are you with us again? I'm here, John. Okay, thanks. Uh, apologies thanks, for yeah. the apologies for the line. The question I wanted to ask you is: You tracking movements on a bank account? Let's let's use a hypothetical, and and I'll just use myself for convenience. I've been working at a restaurant. Um, I stopped getting money because the restaurant's closed under lockdown rules. You check my account, and you find that I get a payment. Um, but that could be a uh, payment for loyal service, but it's not necessarily going to represent uh, a resumption of my job. Are your system sophisticated enough to, to make that determination? Not, not, not necessarily. I think I'm glad for that example which you just made, uh, John. Yeah. Um, basically, what we, we, we simply do, in case uh, people, individuals, are aggrieved that uh, they've been removed from the system and fairly so. Yes. They are allowed to, 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 to appeal, not necessarily appeal. There's what we call internal review mechanisms. They can be able to go into the system where they, they basically applied and appeal their process because the reason why we said we must do what we call internal review mechanisms is because we wanted to 
do the process as quick as possible. Yes. You can imagine, uh, John, if you have to appeal, it can take three to four months. So you don't want people to stay that long. So we have mechanisms internally at the South African Social Security Agency where a person can be able to, to say, I'm, I'm, I'm not employed, uh, I'm still st- uh, unemployed, but however, my money uh, did not uh, uh, was not paid. So if people are grieved, they do particularly have that option to make an appeal. Is your appeal system overwhelmed? Because t- based on the calls, and I, and I fully accept that, that we tend to hear from people who've got a problem. I mean, not many people are going to mm-hmm. call in and say, hey, this thing's going s- swimmingly because why would they call? Mm-hmm. Do you have sufficient capacity to process the volume of appeals that I would imagine you are likely to get and presumably that's going to grow uh, if this grant is phased out? No, no, we, we do. We do have uh, that capacity, uh, uh, John. Uh, but obviously, there might have been, there might be that zero comma zero five percent of error and so on. Hence, uh, you have people who we have, what we have done. We have given an individuals the the right to exercise their right uh, if they feel that uh, the South African Social Security Agency kick them out when they are supposed to be paying them. But we have dedicated people who are on a daily basis going through uh, those people who are grieved. I don't want to say appeal because sure. appeal is something else. We have people who are working on people who are grieved and they are able to resolve their matter immediately. But uh, obviously, John, we had some of the discussions um, uh, as management of SASA and so on, and we think what we want to do is that when a person is aggrieved, the matter must be resolved right. as quick as possible because if you don't need the 350, you would not have applied. Thank you very much, Paseke Litsati, spokesperson for SASA. News. Experts. Analysis. Where things stand. What you need to know. Drive home with John Pullman. On 702.